Well, Michael Chertoff was the nation's second Secretary of Homeland Security. He served from 2005 until 2009. Now, remember, that department was created in response to the September 11th attacks that killed more than 3,000 people. Now, he's the chairman of the Chertoff Group, and he joins me live from Washington. Uh, welcome to In Business, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, we so often think of the world in pre-9-11 and post-9-11 terms. What is the post-Osama bin Laden era? Well, obviously, we're all very gratified about the fact that uh, he has finally met justice. But I, in terms of whether this causes a sea change, in the threat picture, I'd have to say it does not. Um, obviously, a cadre of operational leaders has developed in al Qaeda, not only in South Asia, but in Yemen and North Africa in the years since 9 11. And while removing bin Laden has psychological and symbolic importance, it by no means spells the end of the network, which has grown up over the last uh, decade plus. So I think we're, we're going to be dealing with this. Uh, issue of a war against uh, extremist uh, Islamists for some considerable period of time in the future. Uh, does Al Qaeda or does Islamic extremism still pose the biggest threat to U.S. security? I mean, how do you gauge the security threat at this point? Well, I, biggest is kind of a vague term. I think in terms of a group that is actively and constantly seeking to cause uh, damage and death in the United States, clearly Al Qaeda and similar groups uh, are at the top of the list. In terms of capabilities, there are, are uh, obviously nation states and even other terrorist groups that may have more capabilities. The issue with Al Qaeda and similar groups is what capabilities will they develop in the future? Uh, will they be carrying out a lower level attacks or are they going to be continuing in what has sometimes been an effort to obtain much more damaging weapons? Does this, in essence, this, this killing of Osama bin Laden, do you think it, it makes him even more of a legend, more of a myth? Does it create a martyr in a way that actually strengthens or threatens to strengthen extremism? Uh, you know, a lot of this is going to be in the eye of the beholder. For many people, the fact that bin Laden is killed will be viewed as a blow to the prestige of al-Qaeda, and that's obviously a good thing. There's no doubt there's some people who will probably, uh, you know, put about the conspiracy that he's still not dead. Right. And, you know, you'll have a, a, a kind of like the headless horseman, you know, riding around uh, in myth. And for those people, really nothing you can do is going to change their thought process. So... Again, I would not describe this as a game changer. It doesn't fundamentally alter the conditions that we face, but it's certainly a positive step. And from a symbolic and psychological standpoint, it sends the message to terrorists that we will never let up, we will never relent. And that's an important message. We just three days ago saw a bombing in Morocco that Al Qaeda was credited for carrying out an attack there. What is the the possibility of reprisal for this uh, killing of bin Laden. And, and how do you classify this? Was he assassinated? Was this part of a, a larger war, military action? Well, there's no question this was military action and part of war fighting, and that's appropriate uh, because he's obviously uh, a, a wartime leader, uh, albeit one who has uh, uh, violated every rule and norm of of law that you can imagine. But I think the Moroccan situation is instructive partly because uh, within the last 48 hours, the Germans disrupted a plot in Germany that they believe in part was inspired, uh, according to reports, by people seeing what happened in Morocco and then Moroccans in Germany saying to themselves, let's yeah. go do the same thing. So that's the kind of thing that spontaneous reaction that I think people are going to be looking at very carefully. I remember back in 2004, Tom Ridge saying that Al Qaeda was clearly targeting the World Bank, IMF, City, the financial uh, security of this country. What's the safety specifically of the financial community at this point? Does that threat still exist? Of course it does, because uh, they are interested in attacking iconic and valuable parts of the American economy and American society. And the financial sector remains an important part of America's economy and its visible role in the world. So without suggesting there's a specific threat uh, against the financial community as we speak, you always have to put financial and business interests right. as symbols of America at, at the higher end of the list of targets. All right. Secretary Chertoff, thank you very much. May my pleasure.